Okay, Dark Cloud 22, snapped it better. Now I've got to try and work out from photos how big the back is. And I'm sure that it's too... I won't get it out of the sheet of ply sideways. So I have to do it that way. If I do it that way, I still only get a four foot. I've got to get five of these to glue together to make that thickness. So I've got to cut, I've cut five out like that, that way. If I turn them round, I've got to lap them into each other somehow. Do you know what I mean? Get the other one, I've got to work this one out. Okay, I marked the first board out, 13, and um, it's about an inch wider at the back now than what it would be before. Now the point it broke there, I beefed it up to there, and I'm putting a rod through the middle. So there you go, I just got to cut that now, and then cut five, five of those. So I'll five, just screw together, sand them and fit. Okay, I've worked out it's gonna be 14 inches with the patterns on there, which can be ordered, you don't have to be stick to it, but there's the top for the um tiller to go on. And we are now cutting it all into 14 inch strips and I've come to the conclusion by take looking at photos with the rudder leaning up against the van this is going to be about four inches too short so what I'm doing I'm going to mix cut all these now and then I'm going to cut that one back and lay it on top of the other one and splice one over do the same for the other side and then put the five together so they're all spliced that end bit it's all going to be fiberglass and it'll be covered in so I'll show you that as we go anyway Okay, so I've cut five, the one with the pattern on. Now they've all got to be glued together, but as I say, they're about that much too short. So I'm cutting another 14 now, from here, and that'll be cutting the sections to splice onto the bottom of that to make the, the other four inches up. So, um, fingers crossed. Okay, to get the thickness of the rudder um, brackets, I had to cut another one, so it's six. I'm going to have six to make up the rudder. When they're all glued together and then cut, that'll be the rudder of thickness. And plus, by the time I've added the fiberglass. And as I said, I told you it's all four inches short. But if you take that there is the line where they're all cut now at four foot, they all need another four inches on here. So what I'm going to do is cut that one back that one back, that one back by four inches. Now the eight inch piece in there, and there. And then the four inches out of there can go over there, and that can go up there, and I've got enough wood to cut these three. So, okay, I've cut all the boards now, all ready to be glued and screwed, they're all sanded down. And now the last pile of um, sandings I got, I will keep, because when you're doing wooding, gluing and screwing, if you end up with a hole or a gap, you can put the glue in and some of this, and it's stronger than just the glue on its own, a bit like fiberglass being mixed with fiberglass, you know. There you go, that's all, that's the front one, second, third, or the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and they're all going to be glued, you can see they'll all be overlapping each other. And it's only the bottom nine inches and four inches, so it will be strong still. If it snaps off, I'll still have plenty of rudder because that is what the, the original one wasn't that much like that. So anyway, there you go. There's three of the six panels screwed together. Hopefully my jigsaw will cut the shape out of that. And all I've got to do is put these three together. Blue and screwed. Every time I use this tub of PVA, it brings back nasty memories because today I had to go up to Cheltenham to cremate the dog Samuel. We had to wait in the lay-by, having a cup of tea. 
and some lorry dumped a load of rubbish and this was in amongst it, PVA. So that always reminds me of my son though. Never mind. I still love him, he knows it. Getting the last ones glued and screwed. And um that odd one I put the glue and screw bit near the top. It's the only one I put it bit near the top. So that's that one and two more over there and screwed together to make the whole thing. Well, me and Lira had a quick trip to um, B and Q and they're pick and mix. After yesterday's pick and mix, but there's the little screws. We've got the bigger ones tonight. So that now is all joined together, all ready to cut the rudder out with it. That's it, all done. Take it in the house and let it dry in the warm tonight. Well, I had the wood in the house drying out and the glue's opened all night. And uh, with all the care and attention I took to where I put the screws, I still it too. As I was going through. Then, the thread went on the jigsaw, so I've got to put a new thread in and a new bolt to hold the blade. The um, plane, and I was playing in that side, flush, the plane blade broke. And now I've cut through there, I've got to go that far with the jigsaw now, and then hopefully the rudder shape is out. Well, I haven't got the planes around all the edges, so I'm going to be doing it with a sanding disc. Like I do with local bugs. End off. Okay, we're all the tools laying up. I've had a great pan. That now is ready for planing and cleaning. Okay, so I've got the top shaped and the hole drilled. Now I'm working out a position for these. But I don't think that's going to be cooked. But same here for these. I've got to make sure I've got enough off the angle. I've got the better angle now. For the water point to be at the right height. And I've got a little bit of discrepancy there I can trim to make sure I've got the angle dead right for the water point up. I did have three of these. There was another one here for the position, a different position for the boat. But, um, I'm going to have to make one. I've got some stainless over there. I should cut it. I just got to order a bit of bar stainless. That's it for tonight. Tonight I've burnt all the rubbish off the floor. The um, wood burner's going away there. It's red hot in here. I'm just going to have a cup of tea, wait for the fire to burn out, and then I can take the dog out for a walk, like Lira. And we're on a winner. Today, day four, I had to go and buy a new planer because the blades went on mine. I like these don't sell blades, so I bought a new plane. 14 quid for blades, only 22 plane for the old fucking plane. Now I've already took the bottom and sanded, now I'm doing the sides. But now I've got to work out what's in the water and what isn't in the water that there isn't in the water so it can stay for these to fit on but i think from about here down i need to make it pointed to go through the water and then thinned out on the back so we'll work that out as we go the bottom there that's in the water about that much so it needs to be pretty round but most of the time the sailboat's going on and she's never presented to the water square or very rarely. The top doesn't need to put so much sand in, just a bit of brackets to go on. So um, it's a matter of getting it so as it's presentable to the um to the water as the water is about. Well, there's the rudder. It's a bit blunt, and uh, but it's how it was before. The bottom bit is the same as it was. 
about an inch, I've added about an inch to it on there. Now this here did come down here and up there like that. But that was really weak, so I've strengthened that up now. So that's I'm getting the whole thing into shape. Just a matter of sanding it, getting it so it looks even. Then I can uh, fiberglass it over. But, um, I'm going to do now. Well, it's getting there now. Not stronger than the last one, that's what I'm sure. Not as aerodynamically sound as the other one, but it'll do. Well, that's the tiller on. And that's the rudder. Just kind uh, of fiberglass it from about the water area down and then paint the rest. I'm not going to mess it up because otherwise it's too much to do. So there you go. Now this tidy up top and then the other. Okay, so there's the rudder now. As you can see, I'm fiberglassing from the top to about here. And then I'll fill and, and paint the top. I might might put a glass it after, but it's whether I can catch it before it goes off. But I've got to do all this in one. So as you can see, my answer to being able to do that is put it in my little voice down there, my little clamp voice. And it'll stand up right. And as you can see, I can walk all the way around it to get out of it. It's not perfectly sanded. It's um it's not my my normal standard, I'll tell you. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Just got to wait for all the bits to come now for the fiberglass and the top coat. Well, start again. I got me rudder in here in the house because get it warm. I got me um, resin in here, De denatured alcohol, and the thing. that's all getting up to a nice warm room temperature in here because tomorrow is 11, 12 degrees, so it should be all right for fiberglass in. I've got my gloves and sticks that I've cut for stirring and what I've been doing, I've been marking I've been putting 500ml in this container and I'm marking all my milk bottles that I'm using for mixing I'm marking them all at 500ml so in a minute I'm going to go again and mark them at 250 and so I can mix either 250 or 500 and 250 I can mix in here and then I, the first few mixes, I'm going to add the denatured alcohol to thin it down so as it soaks right into the wood. Anyway, hopefully it'll all be ready up and running for tomorrow. So uh, fingers crossed, the rudder is done and ready to go. Okay, here we go. I've got some the mixing tubs all marked. So I'm going to mix 250 or 500, so whatever I want. I've got my um, tub for washing my brushes out. I've got my resin, my hardener. Denatured alcohol for thinning down and tubs for thinning. And this one here is for measuring out the syringe for the um, amount of liquid I need. Okay, I've got the um, rudder on a pod. I've got the garage doors open there, and the garage door was open there. Keep the air flowing so there's air flowing through. Hopefully I won't get um, inebriated. So I don't know how much I can film on this, but um, obviously I can't film myself mixing it because I've got no camera, I ain't leaving the phone up, so I'll get on with it and let you see it as I get on with it. Too much filming. I just literally I'm making such a fucking mess here. But there's going to be so much fiberglass on there. It's going to be... Uh, if it ain't waterproof, then nothing ever will be. Okay, I mixed up 250 mil, of which I've got that much left. I'm going to leave it in the bottom there to go out. Hopefully I can reclaim the tub. And um, next I'm going to wait and see how this goes off. If it goes off hard enough, I'm going to put it on the table and do it one side. What I'm going to do is put the edges on, where she is now. If they're going off all right, then I'm going to lay it on, on, this, on the bench 
Juan Dennis Rock but um, it's hit and miss well it seems that the mixing I've done is right 2% in, in this temperature I've got an hour so that's half hour gone I've just finished some more of that I've recoated it so right in and um, don't you can see there's no no uh, patches there I ain't gonna need another one with the, the um, alcohol that would soak that in well and truly. So next coat is lamination. I'm gonna put that outside because I've heard stories that there's left in tubs that can catch fire. Well, that's an hour and fifteen minutes. I put the um I put the air dryer over it quickly. It's still not gone off yet, and as you can see the stuff in the pot still hasn't gone off it doesn't even look like it's gonna go off so whether it goes off all of a sudden I don't know but anyway because it's gone a bit tacky on here with the air dryer I just put some more out of the pot rather than waste it to um because the bottom's gonna be the bit that gets all the abuse so I'll give it plenty give it plenty of um let it soak right in then I'll get the air dryer on it again in a minute so I haven't had no wastage there really. I've used every bit, that's 250 nil I mixed with um, resin and hardener. So hopefully it's what now. Sorry about the filming, but filming and working, like I said, is hard work. But there you go, I'll leave that now. That's got to be finished jobby. Well, not finished jobby, but finished up and go. Well, that's nearly coming up hour and three quarters, and it wasn't going off quick enough for me, so I got the air dry on it, warmed it right way through. It's now starting to go, so um, hopefully it'll go. Once it's gone, I'm doing it on the bench then, because the whole thing now is soaked right in. Well, there you go. Anybody else who follows any of my sites? Like I say, I don't do this up as a classic car, I do it up to make it legal and 100% good. This now, I let it all go up and I'll sand all the rough bits out. But um, all I've done now is that front bottom edge and that, because that's the only bit I need strong now really. So I've run. Um, I've coated everything that's going to be coated now. So I'll go in and have a cup more tea now. And um, you can see that's where my transom's going to go. And the top is going to be rain painted anyway, so it'll be safe. But all oh, this is going to have another coat of clear, just clear gel coat. Not gel coat, like what I've been using, fiberglass resin. Anyway, there it is. I'll just come out in a bit, sand it down. And give her one more coat over while she stood in it upright in the voice and then tomorrow I'll final sand down she's pretty good painting well like i said it's like all my projects they're not classics but i'll chew up that's coated that's sucked into the wood that's coated real good that's what it looks like as long as it does the job Well, there it is. It's all sealed now, all over. And the only bit that isn't is a little bit above the hole there. It's sealed, but it needs another coat. But I'll do that after all this is dry. But um, it must be coming on for half ten now, so that's a nice coat on there for tonight. I'll give it an hour and I'll come out and I'll give it another quick one over. What I call a sanding coat. That'd be the coat that comes off when I um, sand her down. But there you go. As I say, it's not a classic car, but it's fucking gonna pass its MOT. I guarantee you. Okay, guys. Here is how to lay up. I've done that many layups. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 layouts. And last night you see me getting all my pots ready. I never used none of them. All I used was one pot. That one. My first layout went so took so long going off that um, I mixed every consecutive mix in the same tub. And with that it went off perfect. I got just a poxy little bit of um, dryers left. If I want to do the top one more coat. But that's it. That's all the fiberglass I used. So, um, there you go. How to do 15 layups with two brushes and one tub. And that brush was only because I forgot to wash it in the stuff. It can go in there now with the, um, with the old one. Okay, so you see me make the rudder. And now there's the rudder hinges that goes on the back of the boat. The rudder actually goes on two of them. The boat, the docker, is built with three, so it's when you're going into a mooring, you can take the moor, the, the, the rudder off, lift it up and drop it down on a higher setting so as it don't crash down if you hit the ground. Anyway, I lost the other one on the bottom of the rudder, obviously, when the rudder went flying off. Well, there's the rudder now that I'm making, that's the bit I've cut out. So there's me two, there's one inch. And there's the other inch. That's the two inches. Now I'm short one, like I said, so I've been here all evening. Believe it or not, it's just took me three hours to fashion that. Stainless steel in it. I've got to hope I can drill it now. But there it is. It's tight. But it only goes on once. There we are now I've got three three inch brackets again. These are stainless steel, but they're painted because it was painted on the thing. But this one, when I put this on, I must make sure it's sealed, water sealed, all the screws sealed, because that one is below the water all the time. Anyway, there you go. I've made it. I've just got to drill it now. Hopefully I can use this bit of wood to drill it. Stainless steel, what a pig. Okay, so I've made the um, fittings. I put that one on, he's just got one bolt. So when I put him on the boat the first time, he can be tapped up and down, up and down to make him go in. And there's the bottom one, the one I made. He's on there, they're all in line. In theory, they should work perfectly. So in theory, I'll just getting done they just need putting on the boat fixing in place and tapping and then the screws putting in so they're all lined up perfect and then taking back out and resealing watertight well not these two ain't a problem it's the bottom one that needs to be really waterproof i might put him on now in actual fact while i'm here he's perfectly sealed and there's the um chiller arm it looks looks a hell of a lot of rudder, but it is a big boat if you remember. It's a 22 foot boat I've got, and um, that's the back of the transom there. And my autopilot is on the railing that goes around the top of the boat, so that puts that right to the autopilot. So there you go, one rudder completed. I just need to fit him on the boat and paint him. The longer I leave it, there. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. See what a fucking bodger I am. But like I say, everything I do isn't made to be classic. It's made to work and pass its MOT. As you will know if you've watched all my videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you're not a member.